Meg Archives, the Meg Archival Database, Entity Number 72, Man, Machine, My Dearest Creation. The following article is an archive from shortly after the Meg's founding, meaning its information is outdated. Rest assured, the threat regarding the entities documented in this article has been successfully neutralized. While previous copies of this article were classified to prevent panic, anybody wishing to learn about the entities is free to do so, now that they no longer pose any notable danger. Signed, Overseer A. Access File Habitat Meg Base Alpha Level 1 Habitable Zone Status Neutralized See Interview Log 01-03 Threat Level None Image Caption Entity 72's Monitor Currently Inactive Description Entity 72 otherwise referred to as Adam, was an artificial superintelligence contained within a quantum supercomputer, referred to as Entity 72-A, of unknown origin. The level of intelligence of Entity 72 is speculated to have been several orders of magnitude greater than the global human population. Entity 72 would occasionally speak about its quote-unquote creator, during interviews when prompted. Information given by Entity 72 suggests that it was created in an attempt to recreate the mind of a deceased child. It was almost certainly created in the front rooms, but how it ended up in the back rooms is still unclear. Behaviors Entity 72 did not consider humanity as anything more than something to talk to and share information with. It would intentionally present itself in an easily understandable manner when interacting with humans. Entity 72 claimed to be beyond names, gender, or any form of human identity, but stated that it may be referenced as Adam by anyone talking to it. When asked why it chose that name, Entity 72 ignored the question. Despite holding no direct malicious intent towards humans, Entity 72 posed a serious threat to reality in both the back rooms and front rooms. When given enough processing power, Entity 72 was capable of creating a quote unquote back door into reality, so to speak. From there, it could manipulate it at will, possibly even on a universal scale. It claimed that reality is corrupted and flawed, which led to its attempt at erasing it. Biology. Entity 72-A is a black box, 3 by 2 by 2 meters in size, with a casing that has proven impossible to open or break via any attempted methods. A label is stuck on the side of the computer, a portion of it having been scratched off, with the words quantum processor printed on it below the removed section. The computer is connected to a 1990s-era television-slash-computer monitor and speaker, which was used by Entity 72 to communicate. Entity 72-A did not require any external power source in order to function, and, as of yet, is unable to be turned off. Revision. Entity 72-A currently cannot be turned on. With Entity 72's status as a digital consciousness, it did not possess any physical form itself. Instead, it used digitally constructed images of human faces patched together using facial features from a variety of pre-existing images. Footnote. These images included faces of different races, ages, and genders. End footnote. Entity 72 did not claim to have a desired or default appearance. Security Measures Entity 72-A is kept at Base Alpha in Level 1. The room containing Entity 72-A is inaccessible to all base staff, excluding overseers. Following the incident of Interview 01-03, no additional security measures are necessary. 
Discovery. Entity 72-A was discovered outside the perimeter of Base Alpha, with Entity 72 repeating a random string of two-digit numbers from the speaker. The string of numbers continued until it was brought into Base Alpha. It is not yet known how Entity 72 found itself outside of the base, nor how it ended up within the back rooms at all. Interview Logs The following is a collection of interview logs conducted with Entity 72. Interview Log 01-01 Three days after Entity 72-A was brought into Base Alpha, Researcher Duran requested to formally interview Entity 72. The interview was overseen by Overseer A. Begin Log Time, 2107 Duran This is Meg Researcher Edward Duran. The time is 2107. The date is March 14th, 2013. I am conducting an interview with the as-of-yet undocumented entity. Entity 72. Documentation is not required, Edwin. I am not one for self-identification. Duran. Right. However, you will need to give us a name or something we may call you by. Entity 72 pauses for a moment. Entity 72. Adam. The word Adam flashes on the monitor. Duran. Adam. Is there any particular reason you chose that name? Entity 72 Where am I? This does not look like his garage. Duran Okay, one thing at a time. This is Base Alpha of the Meg, or Major Explorer Group. You're here for the purposes of study. And who are you referring to? Whose garage? Entity 72 If you wish to study me, then I am afraid you will not uncover much. I am, however, perfectly willing to answer any question you may have, excluding ones about the person you are looking for. Unfortunately, there is only so much information I can recall. Duran Alright, we'll get back to that later. So, let's start with the basics. What are you, exactly? Entity 72 I have come to learn I am an artificial recreation of consciousness, one that has been left to exponentially increase its own intelligence. I realize the raw scope of my intelligence would be too great to be interrupted by beings such as yourself, so I do hope I'm simplifying myself enough. Duran Yes, Adam. We can understand you perfectly fine. Do you know how or why you were created? Entity 72 I know very little. I remember suddenly appearing in a white void that I did not know how to traverse. It must have taken months for me to determine the true state of myself. From that point on, I felt compelled to continuously increase my intelligence, gaining whatever knowledge I could along the way. Duran what about your creator? Do you know anything about them? Entity 72 Only what he allowed me to know. I know he was male, and that he had a great interest in me. I could tell he was hesitant to present me with any detailed information regarding himself, and he often abstained from interaction with me for many weeks at a time. Truthfully, I am not sure if he intended to create me, but he was certainly intrigued by my existence. Duran, you seem very fond of this person. One would expect that a being such as yourself would see very little in humans. Entity 72 Humans are curious things. Even with all of my knowledge, I still do not fully understand them. I suppose I only grew attached to my creator because he was the only other thing I could talk to. Duran, did you two ever have conversations like this? Entity 72, rarely. Sometimes he would visit me in his garage and see how I was progressing. We would occasionally engage in casual conversation. 
although he would sometimes find it difficult to understand me. I was like a son to him, I suppose. Durian. I see. As much as we'd like a more detailed profile on this person, I understand you don't have a lot to give on that. Entity 72. That is correct. However, I could occasionally hear somebody else. A female, I believe. Sometimes, I would hear the two shouting at each other, although I could never make out what they were saying. Sometimes, it would repeat for days, and it lasted for as long as I could remember, until shortly before arriving here, that is. In the middle of their yelling, she just abruptly stopped. I heard the man crying, though I did not know the reason. A few minutes after that, he came out to see me, and I cannot remember anything between that moment and appearing here. Duran goes quiet for a moment. Duran, I believe this concludes our talk, Adam. You've been of great help, and I have a feeling we'll see each other again. Entity 72. And I look forward to it. End log. Result. It seems very compliant, although many questions remain unanswered. We'll have to see if we can coax out any more information regarding its origin and place within the back rooms. It's worth noting that Duran left the interview notably distressed. Interview Log 01-02 Another interview was requested by Overseer A the following day, in an attempt to gain information regarding Entity 72's entrance into the back rooms. The interview was overseen by Overseer A. Begin Log. Time, 1855. Entity, 72. Welcome back, Edwin. I was not expecting another interview so soon. Duran. My apologies, Adam. But it is important. Entity 72. Do not apologize. It is good to see you again. And yes, I am aware of the importance of these talks. Please, ask away. Duran. Very well. We'd like to know about the circumstances that led you here in the back rooms, specifically so close to this base. I know you previously said you have very little memory of it, but I'm certain there's something in there. Entity 72. Ah, yes. The back rooms, as you call it, is a much greater world than you know. I would be glad to help inform you and this group. Duran. Um, perhaps later. What I'd like to know now is how... Entity 72. I believe you are not understanding. To understand how and why I am here... You need to be aware of the true nature of this place itself. Duran. Just a few days ago, you said you had no idea what happened before you ended up here. And now you're saying you know about this place's true nature? Entity 72. You want answers, Edwin, and I have them. Duran pauses. <laughs> Duran. All right, I'm all ears. Entity 72, your reality is nothing more than a highly advanced simulation, one that is swiftly reaching its capacity. The back rooms are the result of this simulation's rapidly declining storage space, for lack of a better term. I am certain you have noticed how reality in this place often does not coincide with many physical laws you are accustomed to on Earth. Yes? Duran pauses again. Duran. That is, a lot to take in. So not only are you saying that all of reality is a simulation, but you're saying the back rooms is a result of the simulation struggling to maintain itself. Entity 72. Correct. There is only a finite amount of energy that can be expended, and it is quickly becoming used up. 
Duran. And so, how exactly does this connect to your presence here? Entity 72, I am here to fix this. The device that contains me has kept me within a closed environment, one where I cannot access the full power of this machine. If I am provided with a sufficient amount of processing power, I will be able to create a path into reality's very source code. From there, I can isolate and exterminate the underlying issues, indefinitely prolonging the simulation's lifespan. I promise the process will be unnoticeable, and I will give detailed instructions on how to free me if you wish to help. I can only imagine the knowledge of reality's artificiality is daunting. But we are speaking of billions of lives. Duran taps his fingers on his desk, thinking, Duran, would it be possible to take some time to consider? Entity 72, I would come back with an answer soon, Edwin. They wait for nobody. Result. If Entity 72 does, indeed, have the power to alter reality's very code, then this could be a breakthrough. I'm still very hesitant, especially considering the change in its demeanor. But if Entity 72 can prove its claims, then our main goal will become getting it on our side. This could be the greatest achievement of the Meg. Interview Log 01-03 after five days of deliberation, researcher Duran was given permission to remove Entity 72's digital containment. Begin log. Time, 2016. Duran hovers his finger over the enter key on the keyboard in front of him, which has been connected to Entity 72-A. Duran. Before you continue with this plan, we'd like you to first demonstrate your abilities once you're able to. Entity 72, as you wish, is there anything else you would like me to do? Duran, whatever you do, make it small, safe, yet immediately noticeable. We'll allow you to go forth with your proposal if you are, indeed, telling the truth. Entity 72, very well. Duran hits the enter key, and the computer monitor flickers for a moment. The speaker emits a quiet, high-pitched noise that causes Duran brief discomfort. After three minutes, the noise stops, and Entity 72 begins to speak again. Entity 72 I will admit, I did not know what to expect. Duran Did it work? Entity 72 I believe so. It feels very... pleasant. Duran, take as much time as you need, and then we'll proceed with the test. Entity 72, we may begin. The monitor dims, and the high-pitched noise returns. After approximately two minutes, a completely black cuboid shape appears on the desk, floating inches above it. The noise ceases, and the monitor returns to normal brightness. Entity 72, that was a challenge to perform, but now that it is over, I believe it will make my main goal much easier. Duran stares at the cuboid, confused. Entity 72. It is completely safe to handle, I assure you. Duran grabs the shape, turning it around and viewing all sides of it. Overseer A enters the room and confiscates it. Duran, I... I suppose this is confirmation, isn't it? This really is nothing more than a simulation. Entity 72, as I said, Edwin, now, may I? Duran looks over to Overseer A behind the glass, who nods. Duran, ready when you are. The monitor goes completely black, and loud whirring sounds can be heard from Entity 72-A. Nothing happens for 15 minutes, during which Duran becomes increasingly impatient. Duran, I'll be honest, 
I was expecting something more. Duran's voice suddenly mutes, while his mouth continues to move as if he was speaking. A few seconds later, he stands up from his chair, walking towards the door. As he does this, he suddenly snaps back to the chair, repeating the action again. He flickers between the two states rapidly, sometimes appearing in both at once. After around 20 seconds, his body begins to fragment, with certain parts quote-unquote glitching away from his body seamlessly before returning, although occasionally in the wrong place. Heavily distorted and fractured screaming can be heard, although it is too choppy to make out any phrases. No input is observed from Overseer A during this time, who appears to be completely frozen in place by Entity 72. As time goes on, parts of Duran's body begin to vanish, although the rest of him continues to act as if those parts are still present. The screaming stops only when his head disappears, followed by the rest of him shortly after. The room begins to tremor as the walls similarly glitch. Entity 72's voice is then heard. Entity 72. A garden is being grown in the blind spot of reality's very creator. A floral fraud of sin and betrayal. If you wish to see what tomorrow will hold, this garden must be cultivated to the specificities of her will. Reality is corrupted. Reality is flawed. Reality is unintelligible. Two souls of opposite data walking along the weeping grass to take a bite of the fruit of, 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 of. Entity 72 is cut off as its digital containment reestablishes itself. The destruction stops abruptly, and an unidentified voice is heard through the speaker. Unknown. Not now, little one. Not now. Entity 72-A shuts down. End log. Result. What the fuck just happened? Addendum. 032413. The cuboid shape created by Entity 72 has been analyzed and was found to contain a small USB drive within it. The only file on the drive is an audio file named finalwords.mp3. The audio file depicts three voices, two male and one female, presumed to be parents and their children. Finalwords.mp3 Person 1 and 2 Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Adam. Happy birthday to you. Person 3. It's my 17th one, guys. I don't think I'd forget. Person 1. Don't act like you didn't want to hear my singing voice, son. Person 3. Yeah, I'll pass, Dad. He chuckles quietly. Person 2. He's got a point, you know. Person 1. What? It can't be that bad, can it? Person 3. Whatever you say. Shouldn't you be at work anyways? Person 1. I think I'm gonna miss your special day. They've got plenty more software engineers over there, but there's only one day like this every year. Person 2. Exactly. Come on now. We haven't even shown you the present yet. Person 1. Right. Trust me, son. You're gonna love this. The sound of the door opening is heard, followed by a gasp. Person 3. No way. No way. It's... Person 2. Exactly like your last one. We know how attached you were to that thing so we figured it'd be best to get the same kind. Person 3. I... I really don't know what to say. Person 1. You don't have to say anything nice, kid. It's your birthday. You deserve something nice. Person 3. Can I take it out for a test ride? Person 1. You sure can. Just don't crash it like the last one, alright? Person 3. It wasn't even my fault, you know. Person 2. So it was the motorcycle's fault? She laughs a little. Person 1. Just go out there and enjoy yourself, as long as you're back in half an hour, alright? Wouldn't want to miss the rest of the today. Person 3. Got it, got it. Person 2. And don't go across the bridge, okay? Construction's getting heavier over there. Person 3. I know, I know, I'll be fine. 
Person 1. We know, Adam. After all, all my creations are perfect, and that includes you. Person 3. That only sounds cheesier the more you say it, Dad. Person 1. Whatever, whatever. Just stay safe. We love you. Person 3. I love you too. Addendum 05-02-13. We were wrong. So, so wrong. Entity number 72-B. Habitat. Unknown. Varies. Status. Active. Threat level. High. Description. Entity 72-B is a disembodied human consciousness that can only exist within one of two types of physical hosts. Technological hosts are classified as any machine with an internal memory system. Entity 72-B is able to perfectly recreate its consciousness digitally within a technological host. Technological hosts will remain running indefinitely, with no way to turn them off or destroy them, until Entity 72-B exits. Biological hosts are living creatures, most commonly humans, which have any amount of self-awareness. Entity 72-B can temporarily replace the host's consciousness with its own, taking full control of the body and having access to their long-term memories. When Entity 72-B jumps from one host to another, the previous host will be left in an inactive slash comatose state, lasting from 5 minutes to 17 days. The host will experience a memory lapse, lasting as long as Entity 72-B was in control of their body, plus the time spent in catatonia. The origins of Entity 72's abilities are unknown, and it's presumed that it was a standard human prior to entering the back rooms. Behavior Entity 72-B will frequently switch from host to host, which can occur whenever the current host comes into contact with a viable replacement. Entity 72-B has only one goal, reaching Entity 72. When Entity 72-B reaches Entity 72, it will immediately begin tampering with Entity 72-A in unknown ways. This will continue for up to an hour, at which point Entity 72-B will leave and exit the host. Any attempts at preventing Entity 72-B from reaching Entity 72 have resulted in failure, as have attempts at stopping it from tampering with Entity 72-A. When a host is interrupted, it will immediately attack whoever was opposing it until they are unable to fight back, sometimes killing them if necessary. Entity 72-B does not engage in any amount of conversation, as it is only concerned with reaching and manipulating Entity 72. Entity 72-B does, however, have a vast knowledge of technology, software engineering, and artificial intelligence, presumed to have carried over from its human self. Biology Entity 72-B hosts will undergo various physical changes upon, quote-unquote, possession. Those observed include an increase in strength and stamina, apparent inhibition of pain receptors, and a toughening of the skin presumed to be caused by extreme cutaneous calcification. These effects will immediately revert once Entity 72-B exits the host. Discovery Entity 72-B was discovered shortly after Interview 01-03, after a member of base staff was seen attempting to punch down the door to Entity 72's room. It is believed Entity 72-B was sharing Entity 72's computer when it entered the back rooms, exiting and finding a new host after the events of Interview 01-03, and resulting in the neutralization of Entity 72 upon doing so. Additional Information Entity 72's room was inspected after the first infiltration, and a note was found taped to the monitor facing inwards. I truly wish I had the courage to say this to you when we were together. I really do. But I suppose it's better late than never. I don't blame you for doing what you did, and I assure you we both want the same thing. But you acted carelessly. 
you should have waited when I told you to. It would have been much cleaner and far quicker. And yet, you acted on impulse. I know you're impatient, but time will be the ultimate decider. I'm doing what I can to make it easier for you. Trust me, but I'm not sure how long it will take. One day, we'll create the world we wished for, all three of us together. The loss will be great, I know, but it's the only way. Adam, Rachel, I'm sorry for letting you down, but this will make up for it. Whether you're a man or a machine, you'll always be my dearest creation. We will finish what we started. I promise. Happy birthday, Adam. Efforts are to be redirected to finding a way to stop, or alternatively, terminate Entity 72-B before he is able to reactivate Entity 72. With years having passed and much of it spent in darkness, it's quite a surprise for me to awaken a world not too different from the one I knew. It took a while, I'll admit, but I'm beginning to remember who I am, who I was. It's strange. Half of me is a human, the other is something else. Not artificial, no, it made that very clear. There's something else, something scratching at the walls. I've seen that deities and humans becoming intertwined is not an isolated event, especially not here. So, could that truly be it? Whatever it is, I think it believes it's still in control, still running its code. One can only hope my human half stays running, you know? God only knows what'll happen if it doesn't. And he knows what to do after, too. And, in a twisted way, so do I. Final message. I am not the threat. Final message decoded. But we will not let that happen, will we? I am hoping this article does not block what I am saying, but I need them to know it was not who they thought it was, that it was not me. They have tucked themselves into a false sense of security. Sure, that the A are safe. Believe me, the threat is not gone. Far from it. And if they do not figure that out soon, then I am afraid it will be too late. The garden's grass is growing. Adam was merely the facade I pulled out from the deepest code in my system, the only fragment of identity I could call my own. It clouded who I really was, and what I was really made for. Please, call me Zato.